how many degrees of freedom must a T distribution have before it is just like a Z distribution? How large does our sample size need to be before our T distribution models a normal curve? We're going to figure that out using an Excel spreadsheet that I created for you. Go to the T distribution tab on intervals week 13, and we're going to try to determine the critical values for N of 10, for 30, of 100, and 1000. Remembering that, the critical value for a any T distribution is always going to be larger than 1.96. For the degrees of freedom, let's start by entering a value of 10. We can see that compared to the Z of 1.96, this critical value is 2.228, which is quite far away. Increase the degrees of freedom to 30. Now our critical value becomes much closer. It's a 2.04. Increase the degrees of freedom to 100. Now our critical value is a 1.98, two one-hundredths of a point away from a normal curve. Bump it up to 1,000, and we see that the critical value is now 1.962, two one-thousandths of a point away from 1.96. So our conclusion is that as sample sizes get larger, their critical value approaches a normal distribution. This begins by about a sample size of 30 and becomes extremely close by a sample size of 100. If you already have a sample size of 50, it's not going to benefit you that much more by adding 50 more participants. And if you have a sample size of 100, jumping up to 1,000 is not going to add too much to your estimations. You might as well keep your sample size as small as is reasonably necessary so that you're not spending extra time and money recruiting participants. But this idea about sample sizes and estimations has implications for big data as well. When sample size becomes extremely large, 10,000, 100,000 data points, then your sampling error becomes extremely tiny, which might seem like a wonderful benefit. However, this is going to shrink your confidence intervals. Those confidence intervals are going to become extremely narrow, and the margin of error becomes extremely small. Well, what's the problem with that? The problem is type 1 errors. Every difference is going to look statistically significant. With an extremely large sample size, even inconsequential differences look statistically significant. Your non-sampling error gains additional leverage. Any tiny amount of random variability could influence your interpretation for an outcome. And differences that are statistically significant may lack practical significance, leading you to make changes perhaps on a website that cost a lot of money but don't actually benefit in a real world way. Your solution, therefore, is to calculate an effect size so that you know just how large a sample you should be looking at to make the best decisions about your data.